So many of you guys know that Samsung announced its Galaxy Tab S around the middle of June. Well, my best friend finally has some stocks, so I decided to go pick one up. So this is my unboxing and first impressions of the Galaxy Tab S. Let's get to it. So, here's the box for the Galaxy Tab S, and as you see, it looks pretty much like every Samsung products box that's been created ever since the Galaxy S4 with the wood grain material. Now on the front of the box, you've got a picture of the Tab S. Next, on the right, you've got something that's saying it's 100% recyclable, nobody cares. On the top, you've got more branding. And on the bottom, it is showing its height, which we'll go over later. And finally, on the back, it tells you some specifications of this tablet, which we will go over later in the video. So, I've unsealed both of the seals, and without further ado, let's open her up. So, we just open it up right here, and let's see what's inside. Wow, there is the tablet. So here's the Galaxy Tab S wrapped in a pouch. And I don't think there is any screen protector. Wow, this is light. This is light and thin. But we'll get to this later. All right, so this off to the side. Next, under this, we have got, got some documentation, quick start guide, warranty, all that stuff that you will never read. The next few items are the travel adapter. As you see, it is in white, so it is not color matched. There you go, you can see it better now. And last but not least, the micro USB 2.0 cable. I'm surprised they didn't use the 3.0 standard like they used on the S5 and the Note 3. So, let's get all this stuff away and focus on the device itself. So, here's the tablet itself. Now, when I first got it in my hand, I'm like, wow, this is light. And it, you're right, and it is also really thin. Now, the weight on this thing is 467 grams, which is really light, or 1.03 pounds, and it is 6.6 .6 millimeters thin, so it is right now the thinnest Android tablet so far, or the thinnest tablet so far. So now let's get this out of its pouch. So just undo this, and there is the tablet itself, and no screen protector feel peeling effect though. So here's the tablet itself before I get my fingers on this and make the screen already dirty, let me tell you about the specs. So the display is a 10.5 inch with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 with a PPI roughly around 288. So this either comes in 16 gigs or 32 gig. Now I've got the 16 gig here which retails for $500 or 499 and the 32 gig retails for $50 more. And the processor that is running this is the Samsung Octa-Core processor, so it is comprised of a 1.9 gigahertz quad-core processor or a 1.3 gigahertz processor. Now, one of those is for heavy use, like some graphic intensive gaming, or the other ones for light duty stuff like multitasking and etc. The battery capacity is also 7,900 milliamp hours. And there is three gigs of RAM. Now before we get to the sides, as you see, there is some plastic, so let's rip it off. All right, so let's start with this one. Not much of a sound. So let me just finish it off off camera. So let's walk through all the buttons and ports around the tablet. So on the top you've got your Samsung logo and you've got your proximity sensor and your ambient light sensor as well as your 2 megapixel front facing camera. And off the bottom you've got your multitasking button, your home button, your back button and there is a fingerprint sensor so that is pretty neat and cool. And on the side You've got one of the speakers, you've got a micro SD card slot, which can support up to 128 gigs. And here you've got your charge and sync. And on the bottom you've got nothing. On the left you've got your headphone jack, right there. And you've got the other speaker. And finally up top you've got your power button. 
your volume rocker and your IR blaster for watch on or for your TV. On the back you've got an 8 megapixel camera with an LED flash and on the bottom you've got these two holes which are for the Samsung accessories so like the book cover and the simple cover as you see you've got one right there and there so as you see on the back you see the same material as you see on the Galaxy S5 now the black model will use a different material which will mean it will be grippier and on the white model, it will use a bit of a different material. Now, as you see through the tablet, the sides have this gold, which on the white models I've seen, they don't look as bright. The gold isn't as bright. It's more of a white gold, and this gold is more pops out at you. I just wish Samsung didn't use this gold color. I wish they'd just use the silver sides like they've used on the... S5 and Note 3. That's just my take on the side colors that they chose. And so, let's boot her up for the first time. Alright. And there you go. As you see, you got the new Powered by Android right there. Galaxy Tab S. Let's see if there's any juice. And there's the new Samsung animation. And there are the backlit buttons, which we'll go through later. And I'll be back in a few seconds after I set this thing up. And there you go. I've got it set up, and I'm going to take you through the OS. So, you're asking, hey, what's this running? Well, it's running TouchWiz. And you can easily see that, but so far it's been running really smooth. And if we go over to the left, and see, we get the... Magazine UX, which I sort of like. So here are what the buttons do. So back, all you see goes back. Home, home. If we press on home, it will bring us to Google Now. And and if we press on the other button, there is the multitasking. So once you have enough apps open, you can slide through this. But if you want to exit an app, just slide up. That's all you need to do. And down there you can access your task manager and clear all. Now let's see what comes pre-installed with the tablet. Now as you see, you've got all your Samsung things like S-Voice, Samsung apps, watch on. Paper Garden is part of the My Magazine suite. Next you've got SideSync and SideSync is really a way to control your device. So if I go in there, I can install the app on my Note 3. I'm not too sure if it works, but I guess I'll try it out. And you can control your device from your tablet. Next, you've got Remote PC, which is pretty explainable. Control your PC from here. WebEx. It is a really popular application for the business people. And after that, you've got all your Google Apps. And you've got Flipboard. And you've got Handcom Office, which is like Microsoft Word. So you got Word, Excel, Documents, and all that stuff. And here, as you see, you get Dropbox. I believe it's 50 gigs free for around two years. And you've got some subscription services like Business Week and New York Times. Of course, they come with trials. Now, if you click on the three dots here, as you see, you can edit, you can create a folder, view type, change the view type, download applications, or downloaded applications, Uninstall or disable apps, hide applications, and if you got the hidden applications, you can press show disabled apps or show hidden applications, Galaxy Essentials, and help. Now, I also forgot to mention that this has a Super AMOLED display, so get ink your blacks, more saturation, and I'm going to show you this video, see how good the display is. So, as you see, it's not just this to the camera, but it is vibrant. Now, if you compared it to a LCD, it would look something like it, but this just looks awesome. Right there. Alright, we're gonna let it play for a few more seconds. I mean, wow. I'm looking through the camera right now. It does not have a justice to what it looks like in real life. That just looks awesome. But it also highlights at the display at 2560 by 1600. 
It combines the high resolution and the Super AMOLED. Never done before. It has been done before with the Galaxy Tab 8.4 a while ago, but here they are again. I mean, as you see, crisp and vibrant. So if we swipe up, you'll see your notification toggle, so Wi-Fi, GPS, sound, all that stuff right here. And if we go here, you see the S Finder and Quick Connect. You've also got a switch for your brightness and your sound. Now if you look closely, as you see, there is Ultra Power Saving Mode brought from the Galaxy S5. So if we press on it, there will be this stuff, as you see. And if we click, I have read to all this stuff, it will bring us to power saving ultra power saving mode so as you see with 59% I can use this for 45.6 days on standby so as you see this will bring this to a black and white display and this will turn it into a dumb tablet as you see you've got you can add stuff like calculator and Google Plus so pretty useful if your battery is really low around 10% and you need to use it for like, I don't know, 6 hours or so. This is your backup, I guess. And to get out of it, you just swipe down and turn it off. And it, you will revert back into normal touch width. And it will take a bit of time as you see it's turning it off. And uh, there you go, you're back to what you were using. Now one of the cool features that most Samsung devices have is multi-window mode. So if you swipe from the right, there you go, there you go. You've got lots of apps to work with. And if you go up here, you can create which, so if you're in Chrome and YouTube, you can create a mode so if you press on it it will automatically go into these automatically next time you do it and next you've got your edit which is to maybe rearrange or put more in here as you see you've got a ton more and help is just help so let's say you want to use chrome all you need to do is just put it in there and let's say you want to use gmail again put it like so and your options will appear and i'll go through that right now so if we press on it we've got a few options the first one is that you can multitask inside of that window so if i open up something else like i don't know music and gallery and if we go back here, do it again, as you see, you can go back to the last apps that you've put in front of Chrome. So if you want to hop back in Chrome, there you go. And it's the same thing for that window as well. So the next few options are also pretty self-explanatory. So if I press it, as you see, you can swap the windows, so as well. You can copy text, I believe. So, you can drag some text here and drag it over here. And the next one is to make it full screen for whichever one it is. And you'll know which one it is with the blue highlighting. And the last one is to exit out of that app. Now, the Magazine New X is also pretty neat, giving you quick information at a look. So, as you see, you can get some widgets here, email. Now if we, I believe, press and hold, we can do some stuff. So we can change the input, add more widgets, so we can add more screens. And let's go through these. So you can add these categories, which are based off of Flipboard. So if I want to use the travel, just tap on it, and it will appear right there. And if we go again, 
as you see, you've got your social things like YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. And we swipe one more time. We've got applications, so calendar, email, gallery, just all these cool things. Now, they do look cool, but I wish you could have more stuff in there. I mean, so far, this has been really smooth and haven't seen any lag. And that's probably because of the 3 gigs of RAM and probably the processor. But I wish they had the Snapdragon 800 in here, or 801. Now, if you look at the color, it is titanium bronze. And I do like this color. You can't really see bronze color. It's more of a gray color, same with the back, as you see. The back, yeah, I do like this color. It does look pretty nice. I mean, my first impressions are pretty good, Samsung. I mean, I haven't seen any lag, and I'm pretty sure battery life will be good as well. Now, let's compare it to its brother, if you could say, the Nexus 10. As some of you guys knew, I do have a Nexus 10. I bought it about two years ago, so let's compare them. So first off, you can see that the Nexus has the front-facing speaker, which I do like a lot. I don't need to cut my hands around to get the speakers to face me. But the good thing is that the speakers are on its side and not on its back. Now, it is more rounded on the Nexus, so which one you like better? I like the look of the tab, but I do like the Nexus more because of the OS. Now if we put them together, as you see, the Galaxy Tab S is more narrower because you don't get the front-facing speakers. And the bezel is, there's not as much bezel. Now it is a tiny bit taller than Nexus. Now if we look at them from the side, as you see, it is way thinner than the Nexus 10. I believe the Nexus 10 is around 8 millimeters. If, correct me if I'm wrong, I probably am wrong. And the Tab S is 6.6 .6 millimeters, so that is a pretty big difference. Now the weight on these are also really different. This is 467 grams, and this I believe is 630 grams. Now, that is a really big difference. If you hold them both in your hands, it is pretty explanatory. So, if you hold this one, you, you'll automatically feel like, wow, that's light. You, ho you hold an iPad or something, you'll feel that the Tab S is way lighter. Now, if you ask me, hey, should I buy the Nexus 10 or the Galaxy Tab S? Well... The Nexus 10 is almost two years old, and I was expecting a newer version of the Nexus 10 to be announced last year, but that never happened. Now, everything is really, it's better, the specs is better on the Tab S, so better processor, better camera, more RAM, so 2 gigs of RAM versus 3 gigs, an 8 megapixel camera versus a 5 megapixel camera, a Super AMOLED versus an LCD. So, as you see, there are pretty much lots of advantages. And there's also a micro SD card slot on this one. So, my first impression on this is, so far, it is pretty good. I'll have a comparison video between the Tab S and the Nexus 10 coming soon. Probably the next video. So, that is it for me. And for my social links, here they are. Twitter is at tech underscore defender. Facebook is facebook.com slash tech defender. And the tech is spelled T3CH. Instagram is at Asian underscore Android. So guys, if you enjoyed this unboxing, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It'll help me out a lot. And if you want more tech stuff and whatever, subscribe down below. As always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.